Hi, my name is Susan Magnano. And I'm a photographer, light painter, and educator. Welcome to my B&H light painting photography series. When I'm light painting, I truly feel like an artist. The darkness is my blank canvas, my flashlights are my paintbrushes, and I let my imagination run wild. Light painting for me is experimenting, discovering, learning, and modifying. And the reveal is one of my favorite parts. It is so awesome. Oh my God, it like so screams cool. Broadway starlet. <laughs> my true passion is doing night photography. And not just capturing the stars or the city lights, but adding my own flair, my own spark, my own light. I'm gonna take you on a journey into the darkness and show you how to create amazing images out of your imagination with simple light painting tools basic camera gear, and a lot of creativity. Are you ready to bring light into the darkness? Let's get started. So what is light painting? Light painting photography is the art form of using a handheld light source to paint light on a subject or to draw light in a scene while the shutter of the camera is left open during a long exposure. There are three different types of light painting techniques. Traditional light painting is when you shine light on your subject and the light source is hidden. This is typically used in night photography and Milky Way photography to light up the landscape or the elements in the foreground. The second one is light drawing or light writing. This is when the light source is visible in the camera and deliberately moved in an artistic way. You can get really creative with flashlights, sparklers, or even your own iPhone screen. The third one, is kinetic light painting. This is when you create movement with your camera during a long exposure. It could be zooming your camera lens in and out during a long exposure, painting your camera left and right, or even just moving your camera around during a long exposure. So let's dive into camera settings. First, I recommend shooting in RAW because you wanna capture the most amount of information in your file. Then I recommend putting it in manual mode because you want to be in control of all your settings. Bulb mode is necessary for when you want to do a shot longer than 30 seconds or if you want to start and stop your exposure, but you will need a trigger for this. When it comes to white balance, I typically leave mine in auto since I shoot in raw anyway, but if you're looking for more consistent shots, set up a color temperature and just adjust it to match the scene. I recommend turning off long exposure noise reduction because it takes double the amount of time and we're typically going to be shooting at lower ISOs anyway. Also, turn off lens stabilization because you'll be shooting on a tripod. So when it comes to choosing your exposure, they're going to vary based on your location. For instance, if you're shooting in New York City versus shooting in the Catskills, they're gonna be very different because one, you're exposing for city lights and the other one, you're exposing for starry nights. My first step when coming up with exposures is exposing for the background. In your test shot, if you expose for the background, it may seem like daylight. We don't want it to look like daylight. We want it to look like it's dark. So I recommend underexposing a stop or so. You still wanna see the location, but you wanna make it dark enough so you have the opportunity to light paint and actually see your light painting tools. When I'm shooting the city, I typically start at an ISO around 100. And then I decide how long I wanna do my light painting creations for. Let's say 10 seconds. And then I adjust my aperture so it's slightly underexposed. If I'm shooting in an environment like here in the Catskills, I'm looking to capture star trails and I'm gonna to have to expose for the stars. So that means shooting at higher ISOs like 3200 and opening up my aperture to 2.8 so I could let more light into my environment. What's really cool about shutter speed is not only is it, as we all know, the opening and closing of the shutter, it actually controls the ambient light of the photo. So what causes ambient light? It's the starlight, it's the moonlight, it could also be street lights. So that's all ambient light. Aperture is the hole that lets the light in the camera. You also know it controls the depth of field. But when it comes to light painting, it actually controls the brightness of your light painting tools. So what that means is, let's say you're shooting with a light tool and it's actually too dim. And you say, it's at its max brightness. How do I see it more in my picture? You can actually open up your aperture so it actually lets more light in the camera and your light tool will appear brighter. 
ISO is the sensitivity of the sensor, which actually controls the brightness of both the ambient light and the brightness of your light tool. So if you raise the ISO, not only will you be making the ambient light more bright, but you'll also be making the flashlight tools even brighter. Lastly, let's talk about your light tools. They all have their own brightnesses. You can power them up, you can power them down. So there's that part of it. But also you wanna think about the duration they stay on. So flashes and strobes are really easy to use because you kind of set them at a certain brightness and then you fire them away and that is their brightness. It's consistent and it's easy. But let's say you're using a constant light source that turns on like a flashlight or a video light, you turn it on and then you have to power it off. So there's a lot of room for inconsistency there. So they're really great. I love to use flashlights and I like to use video lights, but there's a couple methods you should use when you're using these. Like count the duration of how long you're actually using them for. So if I'm gonna be light painting a barn with a flashlight, I'll count every second that it's, it's on and that, until I turn it off. So I know I can replicate that look or know that it's too bright, I need to only do it for two seconds instead of three seconds. So I know I briefly mentioned my light painting tools and my lights, and you're probably wondering, what gear is she talking about? But don't worry, in our next episode, I'm gonna review all of it and a lot more. So scouting and night photography and light painting is so important, and it's important to do it during the day because you need to make sure your environment is safe. And it's good to see where you're working with. You know, this is a beautiful environment, but maybe I can tell that, you know, it might not be a good place to come to at night. And then also tell somebody that where you're going because you're going somewhere in the nighttime. You never want anything to happen to you. Tell someone where you're gonna be just in case. And also bring a friend. Friends are awesome to have with you when you're in the dark because they keep away the boogeyman. And also they help you collaborate on creating amazing, awesome light paintings. And you guys can share ideas and it's a lot more fun. I'm typically always looking for three things, good composition, overall brightness, and distracting elements. So first of all, good composition is the same no matter what. I want a good composition that's gonna be an interesting background, that's gonna help tell my story. When it comes to overall brightness, that's really gonna control how much light painting I can do. If it's a really bright environment, it may not be great for doing any type of light painting. And then distracting elements. Like it could be a dark area, but then there could be street cars that come by or it could be a distracting um, light that's really in the background and I might just wanna choose a different angle. I also use an app called PhotoPills and I love this app for many reasons. It tells me where the moon is gonna rise, where the Milky Way is gonna rise and also where the North Star is. And these are the three crucial elements I use when I'm doing light painting portraits and I wanna include a really cool starry sky. We have covered so much ground today. First, we discussed what is light painting photography, basic camera settings, how to incorporate light, and also how to find the perfect location. I think we're ready to move on to gear. In our next episode, you're gonna learn all the gear I use, all the light painting tools, and so much more. Tune in for that, and if you'd like to join me for an in-person adventure, check out the link below for Photo Adventures, where I take students on nightly photo adventures. See you there.